this is some information you, you already know. Uh, just about the range of the Untwig cultures, this is also interesting. Whenever you check it, it looks completely different. As you can see, there are some examples from, from internet and uh, from Polish prehistory book. So there are some not clear situations if the British Islands are in or not in. So this is a very current question, actually. Uh, but uh, also the ranges, I'm not sure. This is very interesting because uh, we know a lot about Unfields and we know a lot. It, it, it has, they have been studied for 150 years, but still there are some unclear issues. You can see the, the green spot over there and the uh, yeah, orange one. Here, this is uh, Luzatian culture, which in Poland is the, probably the only one archaeological culture identified in popular archaeology. So if you say in Poland that you are archaeologist, the next question will be not. Yeah, the next is about <coughs> dinosaurs, but the next <coughs> one is about Luzatian culture. So the only culture I know, uh, people know in Poland, this is Unfield culture. And the Unfield uh, cultures have very long history of research. This is just a funny part, but uh, Pol Polish, uh, uh, Polish, Polish historians in the 15th century, uh, he mentions that uh, that s some soils are so fertile that they give birth to the, to the pots. So this is probably the first relation, the first excavation report, the, because he brought the king to, to, to show him that the pots, they come out of the, of the ground, of the soil. So probably this is the first uh, Unfield excavation in Poland. But there are, uh, there are some other reports in the 16th, 17th century of pagan pots. They were somehow connected with very uh, distant past and called pagan. It's like in British Islands, everything that is very old is called Dru in Ireland, it is called Druid. We know Druid crowns in, in this golden crowns in bronze, for example. And since the mid uh, 19th century, this is mass archaeological material. And this is, of course, a problem because we have so many of them, uh, of, of these mostly pots, that we don't know what to do with them. Uh, you can see some archives and also some, um, uh, some storage areas where the pots are just everywhere. And this is one of, I don't know, in Poland, like one of 7,000 uh, unfields excavated. But about the scientific quality, I must say that uh, Ulfils become kind of collection of nice objects because they are complete, because they are made of sometimes made of a very exotic materials like uh, like uh, glassy uh, glassy materials, for example, various kind of metals. They have nice shapes, so they are. Um, they, this is like a kind of uh, 19th century archaeology when uh, the focus was of uh, some aesthetics and the focus was. Every student wants to dig something like this, not like settlement pits, because they are nice and they are complete. So, there, however, of course, these objects, they were a basis for making some chronological divisions or provenance studies. Also, concept about social stratification, but we all know that social stratification reflecting in graves can be very tricky. And actually, we st there is big discussion about what actually we find in the graves. And also, this, uh, there are some papers that will discuss how can we measure the status, or is the status measurable at all. But what do we know about the Unfield societies and the Bulia customs? In these four pictures, you have graves from one <laughs> cemetery, uh, and all the graves were done in the same time. The same time, I mean like 150 years, uh, the same chronological uh, period. But you can see completely different strategies in uh, completely different ideas about how the graves should look like. So uh, why these graves were so different? What was the social negotiation in deciding uh, why this way or not this way? The, we have very little, very few answers to the, the question, very few interpretations. And this is the list uh, of uh, issues that were usually discussed, I think, in all starting from Spain to, to Ukrainian, Ukrainian unfields about status, about great goods, social categories, biological categories. Uh, I focus on the archaeological data, but we have anthropologists here, and they can say that this is a very difficult type of material because it's fragmented, it's not characteristic, it's really reluctant to some modern uh, applications, you know, like DNA, for example. You have tons of burnt bones, but you don't, you don't, you cannot uh, do the, the DNA uh, analysis at all. 
Also, C14 is very is very difficult, and also can be the, the results can be discussed. So, uh, what we have is very detailed data of mostly descriptive character. We can analyze all the objects from micro, from micro to micro scale, but still we'll know very uh, very little about uh, about these people, these communities. And today we have 17 presentation, which is a lot, and we have authors from here and the uh, uh, research areas are marked here. So for me, it's very interesting to, that I have possibility to, that we all have possibility to compare our methodologies, our results, our interpretations, which is also very in, in uh, for me, I'm sure, you saw the abstracts and I saw the abstracts are very inspiring, the, even the abstract. So uh, I'm very excited about this session. So this is the short introduction.